All right, we got Bob Holt with us, sports specialist, Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Good to join us on Thursdays, giving us some of his time. Bob, how are you today? Uh, I'm good. How are you guys doing? We're great. Doing well. Having some fun so far. Trying to convince Drew that he needs to memorize Casey at the bat uh, to uh, read it to uh, his girlfriend's uh, kindergarten class. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, but I have to do it by tomorrow. So that's the thing. You don't have to memorize it. Why does he have to memorize it? Can he just read it uh, (laughs) from a book or copying it down or something? Good point. It's a very good point. Well, counterpoint, Bob. I'm not a good uh, reader out loud. So I'm okay. have to practice. I, I, it honestly would be better for me to memorize it. Yeah. Well, see what okay. happens. You get you get you get 24 hours to worry about All this right. through. Um, Bob, I, I I knew a couple of the of, of these storylines, but I didn't realize how many of them there are across the SEC this weekend. You know, I mean, we've got this Arkansas Georgia game in which Sam Pittman is returning to Columbia, but there's three other games where somebody is making like a big return for the first time since whenever. You know, you got Lane Kiffin returning to Tuscaloosa. T.J. Finley, uh, who we still don't know whether he'll start at quarterback. If you imagine he'll play for Auburn, returns to Baton Rouge. Josh Heupel with Tennessee returns to Columbia, where he was offensive coordinator. I mean, it's like a whole bunch of prodigal sons returning across the SEC this Saturday. Well, of course, Sam Pittman's returning to Georgia. So, yeah, that's kind of homecoming now. Saturday across the SEC. There may be some other guys, but we, we forgot about but that. That's four examples right there that are pretty good. Absolutely, yeah. And I mean, nobody wants the only people that get caught up in that. I guess would be would be you know the fans. You know, Sam Pittman. I think. I mean, you'd like to you'd like to think that him walking into that stadium for the first time as a head coach of of Arkansas, you know, gives him a moment of nostalgia. But you can focus obviously on the thing that's at hand. It sounded to me that what he he talked a bit about what he's learned from working under Kirby Smart, and the first thing he mentioned was organization and and how to practice. So I mean, it had nothing to do with the game in and of itself. You know, obviously he talks about recruiting with Kirby Smart, but he, it sounds like he learned you know how he structures his day and his practice. Yeah, I mean, obviously Sam worked for a lot of head coaches over the years. Um, at you know, some some really big schools and some not so big schools, but I'm sure uh, I would think his approach is probably you know he tries to take the best from everybody he, he worked with. Um, obviously, you know, putting his own spin on things, but nothing he mentioned about about Kirby was you know, putting pressure on your assistant coaches. You know, I guess I guess being very demanding of them. You know, um, and not you know not in any kind of unfair way or. Anything like that, but you know, I think everybody sees Sam as a pretty, you know, a very, uh, you know, pleasant person and great personality. But he also can be tough on the players and the assistants when when he feels the need to do that. I think that's that's been pretty evident that he'll push his assistants as well as the players. I find that with Dave Van Horn too, Bob, and and I don't know. I mean, pressure is one word, but you you see a lot of other folks, and they say this about about Sam Pittman too, and also about Dave Van Horn is they're not micromanagers. So, you know, along with letting your assistants do exactly what you've hired them for and giving them freedom uh, to do that job, pressure goes along with that because you're paid very well. You're expected to, well, you're expected to elevate the program. So, and and it sounds like all these assistant coaches, because it's, it's been a great first month, you know, and the way that they're recruiting too, they buy into that pressure. Yeah, and you know, uh, we get to see a little bit of practice, and you know, watching Sam during camp, and um, you know, we didn't get get to go to practice last year very, very often. I did. We were we were allowed to go some, <clears throat> but yeah, I would say Sam is sort of your CEO coach. Um, you know, he's not a play caller. Some head coaches are, are play callers. They're really involved in you know game plan. I'm sure Sam's involved in game plan and meeting, but. You know, there's some – you talk about Petrino, he was an offensive guy, you know. Um, you, you're not really sure how much he was involved in the defense. Oh, he was to some extent. Because I think I know he told some coaches some things they didn't necessarily want to do or felt like maybe he was being a little heavy-handed. But, you, you know, you watch Sam, he goes around all the position groups. At least when I've seen practice, you know, he'll watch the quarterbacks. and line, You know, you, obviously the offensive line's his specialty, but he goes around to every position group on both sides of the ball. You know, he meets with all – Staff, you know, on Sundays we talked about you meet with the offensive staff, defensive staff, special teams, all that stuff. 
So, um, you know, he obviously knows football, but I think he, he lets his assistants, you know, do their job and gives them leeway. But he's, he's the guy that's going to tell, you know, Kendall Brown, so he's got two plays to make this first down. Or, um, you know, he's got, I'm sure he makes suggestions to, to Barry Odom. But, you know, he, yeah, those guys are well paid, as you point out, for a reason. And, and you know, they're obviously performing at a pretty high level. So I think, you know, Sam's involved, but he also doesn't want to get in their way. Yeah, it does feel like that. And, and you know, that he is, that he hires somebody to do the job and then actually lets them do the job, which is something that we see a lot of head coaches. As soon as things, you know, don't go 100% right, they decide to backtrack on that and, and do everything and basically just have them sit in the corner, and then they get overwhelmed and the program starts to get overwhelmed, and it, and it never seems to really work out when coaches just keep giving and then taking back um, obligations and tasks for their assistants to do. And, and one thing... Um, that we've been getting asked about a lot uh, as this team has had success is about how long Barry Odom and Kendall Browse will be the OC and DC at the University of Arkansas. Do, could you see them leaving after this year if job opportunities come up? And and ultimately, is that a good thing for, for your program? Kind of, you know, you don't want 100% of a revolving door, but kind of like in Alabama has a revolving door of OCs and DCs uh, like they have in the past. Well, I think it really all gets down to what kind of opportunities they have. Um, I have a hard time seeing Barry Odom leaving for another coordinator job. I, I think he's turned down some pretty good jobs to stay with Sam in Arkansas. If he gets, I, I also don't doubt he wants to be a head coach again. And if he gets the right offer, um, I can see him leaving to become a head coach. He might leave to be a coordinator somewhere, but I just think he's really close with Sam. And um, we talked about the working relationship they have and, um, I, I think he could have gone to Texas and LSU. Um, I'm not sure what better job I'm sure you can get than mm-hmm. those two schools in terms of the, the, the athletes you're going to be able to work with and just the um, you know the, the power that those you know those are power programs. And um, you know I think he feels very comfortable with Sam. That they're they're obviously it's a, you know he, he works for Sam, works with Sam, but they're also friends. And I think that that has a lot to do with why Barry Odom's still here. Kendall Bryles. You know, obviously, if he gets a head coaching uh, opportunity, you know, I think he that he feels good about. He would leave for that. Maybe he'd leave for another coordinator's job. But like one thing, I mean, they're proven they can have success at Arkansas, even in the SEC West. Um, and Arkansas has had success before, not Alabama success, not LSU success, but Arkansas has won the West before mm-hmm. and gone to Atlanta. Haven't won a the game there yet, but um, that I mean, I think Arkansas has shown that they can compete in the SEC at a high level. Um, but yeah, it's always hard to retain your coordinators. I think, you know, Sam talked about SEC media days, you know, realize, and, and, and uh, Jim L. Walker, their strength and conditioning coach, apparently he had some offers to leave. So, um, you know, it's like you know, you, you know, it's good to have coaches that other schools want because that means they're doing a good job. And mm-hmm. the key is, is, you know, is retaining those guys, whether it's, you know, through raises or, um, but, yeah, I don't think those guys are going to leave because somebody's offering a ton more money. I think Arkansas would do what it takes to keep them if that's but, – but, but you don't want to hold a guy back either, obviously. Yeah, obviously, and it's good to have other head coaches envy, envy of what you've already got in the building. On, on the defensive side in this game against Georgia um, – you know, we've seen a lot of three man. We've seen all three man front for the last few games. Uh, do you think that Barry Odom sticks with the three man front, knowing that it's worked in the past to stop the run game, or do you think that to continue that success, we see a four man this week and sacrifice the the eight dropping back and just go with seven? Well, I think dropping eight backs. Uh eight-back works better against younger quarterbacks like A&M had, like Texas had. You know, uh, Daniels is a pretty experienced guy. He obviously started at Southern Cal. He started uh, Georgia, I guess, about midway through last season. So it wouldn't surprise us if he didn't come out in the four-man front. Um, but I mean, they'll probably, I mean, also wouldn't surprise us to see him do a mixture of both. I mean, they've been pretty versatile. Um, and Barry's been very good at disguising defenses. You know, you always think about disguising coverages, mm-hmm. but they've been pretty good about uh, disguising where guys are coming from, whether it's a three-man rush, whether they're blitzing linebackers, maybe bringing somebody off the, out of the secondary. 
Um, so it'll, it'll definitely be interesting to see how they approach this because you know, Georgia that hasn't had a super explosive offense like like Ole Miss, the Alabama, but they, they've been you know they have a really good stable of running backs. They have good offensive linemen. You know Sam Pittman's uh, help help them recruit some of those guys, and uh, and, and Davis is a really they got a good tight end. They've got some good receivers, so it's, it's a good offense. I don't know that the best offense they're going to see. Probably the best offense that they would have seen. To this uh, ex- to so far, I, I would say that it's a very good offense, but I don't know if it's going to be as good as Old Miss or Alabama, who they'll see later on. And I heard Coach Pittman, I think it was yesterday afternoon, talking about what what he thinks the game will come down to is who tackles better and who's breaking tackles. You know, last week he said whoever wins the line of scrimmage. Some of this sounds so simplistic, but man, it's I don't really think it is that simplistic because you're facing a different kind of athlete you know with georgia than you face even in a lot of other sec games they're just tougher to tackle you know this has been a good arkansas tackling defense and one of the things that has stood out uh, certainly about the stable of running backs and kj jefferson too i think Traylon burks can do it i think warren thompson can probably do it too they break tackles as well and you know, there, there's going to be tacklers around you. That's just because Georgia's defense is so fast. You're not going to outrun them. You got to break some tackles in this game. Yeah, and uh, you already had a little bit of trouble. I thought tackling A and M was still early in that game, but then as the game went on, they got they got a lot better. Um, yeah, and Arkansas's backs have been good at breaking tackles. You were at AJ Green uh, touchdown uh, pass, touchdown catch. And Ron, I think he broke three tackles. One of the Yankees more or less pushed him towards the end zone. And uh, so I guess he helped him in that regard. But, um, yeah, I mean, football, for all the different innovations and real changes through the last hundred years or whatever, it still really gets down to blocking and tackling in, in a lot of cases. Um, and uh, I think another big key is the Arkansas I did not turn the ball over against Dan. I mean, they only had the one turnover, I think, and that, that turned out to be really key. That led to the field goal drive with Hornsby. They gave him a ten point uh, lead, gave him a two score lead, and um, I think Arkansas only had one turnover against Texas. When KJ threw one interception, I don't think they had any other turnovers. So that that'll be big too. When, when the turnover margin is always big, especially going on the road. You know they need to take care of the ball at, at Georgia for sure. Bob, appreciate you, man. Um, I guess are you got you making the trip? You headed to Athens. Uh, Tom Murphy will be there and we'll have some other folks. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going. The Zooms are all on. Um, I mean, the interviews are all Zoom, whether you're here or there. So, yeah, I made the call uh, not to go. Um, so I, I'll just be covering, which I did, did all the games that way last year. So I've got a little experience doing that. So, yeah, part of me would really like to be there, but um, I think I'll be fine here covering the game. All right. Well, we'll have you on next week. Mm-hmm. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Okay, you guys take care. Thanks, Bob Holt, Arkansas Democrat. We're back and better than ever. All eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back for another football season. As always, Bet Online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. With the new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, Bet Online continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to your website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Don't forget to use our promo code believe to receive your bonus that's b-l-e-a-v from football basketball boxing right to your favorite vegas casino games don't wait to take advantage of these amazing offers for the 2021 season bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports bet online where the game starts